Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm joined by my Madagascar Hissing Cockroach Chestnut to redo my Madagascar Hissing Cockroach Care Guide. So before I get in the actual care of hissers, let's talk about them first and see if they're a pet that might interest you. Now, as you can probably guess from the name, Madagascar Hissing Cockroaches are from Madagascar. They usually live in colonies together and are a relatively social species. Sometimes they're used for feeders in the pet hobby for things that eat insects. And they're often in scary movies because they look so creepy and they're a cockroach. Are older than anything walking the earth today. <laughs> like if I didn't know what a Madagascar scene cockroach was and I saw it laying around in my house or coming out of someone's mouth, I'd be freaking out too. And while they do look kind of freaky and kind of scary, they're not at all. Madagascar and cockroaches is pretty much the opposite of what most people told you about cockroaches. They're very clean. They actually groom themselves quite a bit. They actually have mites on their bodies that have a symbiotic relationship with them. They provide food for the mites and the mites keep them clean. And don't worry, I know that mites can be scary in the reptile hobby, but these are not a parasitic mite and will not infest your other enclosures. If you do notice that they are getting a bit much for your hisser, there's just too many on them, you can simply take a cotton swab, a cotton ball, for example. You just gently wipe them off of the exoskeleton of your hisser and then throw away the cotton swab. They're very docile and often slow moving, especially when worked with. At first, they can be a little flighty and as babies, they can be a little flighty, but normally they're pretty much like this. Don't be mistaken though, hissers can be crazy. <laughs> especially when you first get them or their babies and they're really fast and really skittish, they can surprise you. Usually it's like really fast short spurts though, so they're not gonna get too far. And they can't infest your house. So even if one of your Madagascars and cockroaches does get on the enclosure, they odds are they are not going to have babies in your house because the temperatures and humidity is not gonna be high enough for that. They are actually illegal in some areas because, because their temperature and humidity are the proper ones. So usually those places, these guys are illegal to keep, unfortunately, such as Florida and I think Canada, you can't have any like cockroaches at all. So hissers live about two to five years in captivity and can get to around three inches long typically. They do have a sexual dimorphism. Um, males have these humps here and females have more of a rounded head. Males will use those humps or horns on their heads to combat each other. They will either combat for a mate, combat for food, for territory, you know, typical stuff. They really don't like hurt each other. They just kind of bump into each other till one of them gives up. So it is not a reason for concern if you see it. If you have two males, they're probably going to fight a little bit. So some of the great things about Madagascar hissing cockroaches and why they're one of my favorite pet and one I recommend for beginners is that they're extremely easy to take care of and extremely cheap as well. Now I don't really believe in beginner animals necessarily, but this is a great one for someone who might be wanting to get in the hobby and maybe is a little bit intimidated or doesn't know where to start. I think that these guys are a great option. And on top of it all, they make a pretty cool hiss sound. And I wanna show you one hissing, like right now, I can't though, because I tried getting Chestnut to hiss and he's not doing it. Here's a video from another YouTuber, Layla Amons. She sent me this to show you guys her hisser, Bruce, hissing. Now the cool thing is, is that they actually do that through their exoskeleton. That's not coming out of their mouth, that's coming out of their sides. What they're doing when they hiss is they're pushing air through their exoskeleton to make that noise and tell predators to back off. So let's go ahead and get right into their care with their diet. What do you feed a Madagascar cursing cockroach? Pretty much anything. These guys will pretty much eat whatever you put in front of them. Some of them can be picky, don't get me wrong, but they are able to eat almost anything, which makes it really fun to really get creative and try new things with them. So the only thing that I think that you shouldn't feed them is like onions and garlic, stuff like that. So they can have fruits and veggies like apples, banana, mango, kale, cucumber, green beans, any of that. They can have pretty much everything except for like onion and garlic family. 
They're also not herbivorous like a lot of people think. They do eat protein. So things that you can offer them for protein are things like mealworms. I give mine pre-killed mealworms. You can also give them things like chia seed and cooked egg, even meat. They will even eat meat. I actually have given my hissers a leftover mouse that Greg, my ball python, didn't eat. Um, I will say I've heard that if you're breeding um, or using them as feeders, not to give them too high of a protein. I don't know what all that's about. I'm not a breeder. I don't use mine for food, so I, I don't know. That's something that you'd have to explore on your own. You can even also give them high quality dog or cat food. I have even heard ferret food. I don't personally do this, but you can as long as it is a high quality. Um, just make sure it doesn't have a lot of salt. Uh, make sure any other stuff doesn't have like added salts and stuff like that. I also do throw some cuttlefish bone if you keep snails. Um, you'll probably be really accustomed to cuttlefish bone. It's a great source of calcium. I leave cuttle bone in just about all of my invert enclosures. They munch on it and I think it helps their exoskeleton. Just make sure you give them a lot of good variety with their greens, with their fruits and veggies, and with their protein. These guys really don't eat a lot, so you might wonder if they're eating at all. If you only have one or two, it's pretty much scraps. Honestly, the best way to do it is whenever you get yourself something, like maybe you're making dinner, go ahead and set some of those extra veggies aside and that they can just have the same dinner as you. Also, it's worth mentioning, I don't recommend cooking anything you give them for the sheer fact that it does cut down on the nutritional value. So to give your hissers water, it's pretty easy. Some people put a super shallow dish of water. Um, if you have babies, I don't rec necessarily recommend doing this because they can drown, but if you just have adults, that could be fine. You can also get some like bug gel or some water crystals, which just kind of hold fluid, but it's not in like a liquid form, if that makes any sense. So they can still drink from it. I don't recommend using a sponge, however, because this can hold a ton of bacteria. Now, you can also just do what I do and mist it and they drink it off of the surfaces of the enclosure. So the sides, some of the plants, and they also get water from their food. So I don't actually do anything extra anymore. All right, so let's move right along to housing. So I heard that you want your housing minimum to be three times the length of your hisser. So like both ways on the tank, you know what I mean? Um, I usually recommend maybe two to six in a 10 gallon. I like to give mine a lot of room. They don't necessarily utilize all of it, but it does give them a lot of chance to get away from each other. If you're not interested in breeding or anything, you can always get two males or two females. Um, just know that they do retain sperm. So even if they haven't been in contact with the male with you, if they were in their previous home, they could become gravid and uh, have babies. You want your enclosure to be escape proof. Now, since they can climb, you're going to want to uh, have a really secure lid. So things like clip locks or any other kind of lock that you can use to like hold that down. Or even maybe if you get like a bin like this, where you can just like, like clasp it, that's fine. So what I do is I just put Something with enough weight on it, like my ice pod bin here. Um, I put books on it before, things of that nature to just keep that down. Now I will say this would not be secure enough for babies. You want it to be as escape proof as possible. I will also say if you have the chance of having babies, um, like these, even the smallest chance, you want to put mesh over your lid. So mine doesn't have it because I, there's no way I could have babies right now. I only have um, I only have my male and then two young, like very young ones. So within the next month or so, I will be putting mesh on this, but put a very fine mesh on your screen because that makes it to where babies can't get out. I have never experienced babies. I don't want to. I hear that they can get out of a lot of small places. So you want to have a very, very, very secure enclosure if you have the possibility of babies. Lastly, you are going to want lots of clutter in your enclosure. So for decoration, you want just enough substrate where they can kind of bury themselves if they want to. So what I did is I used rubbed soil as my substrate. I also have some sphagnum moss in there to keep it a little bit more humid. I have some cork for them to hide in, especially rounds, they love rounds. 
some foliage to really clutter it up, especially on top. I have a stick that can climb up and on and some little flower pot hides as well as two food bowls for them to just pick whichever one they want. Now when you feed your Madagascar seen cockroach, I do recommend that you do it at night just because it's when they first wake up and that's when they'll be going out looking for food. My recommendation is that you put their food in and overnight they'll eat it. When you go in to put in fresh food the next day, take the old food out. Now on to temps and humidity. So a good temp for them would be somewhere around 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, don't let it drop below 70. I think 70 to 75 is okay. I wouldn't let it drop below 70. And if you want them to be really active and breed a lot for you, I would say 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if your room, for example, or wherever you're keeping them is around 75 degrees, you don't need any extra heating stuff going on. However, if you do need some help with getting that heat up, uh, heat mats are great, and I think over the tank heaters are okay. I would definitely say a heat mat is probably better for them. Make sure that you have it on a thermostat though, so you can regulate those temps. Their humidity should be 60 to 70%. You don't want it too low because then they won't obviously do well and they'll, they'll probably pass away on you if that continues. Now, if your humidity gets too high, so above 70%, they can develop fungal infections on their legs. So you definitely want to avoid that. Now, if you are having issues with keeping your humidity in and you have a screen similar to this where it's like a screen, what you can do is you can either block some of it off with maybe some acrylic or something. You can also put a towel of some sort over it so you still have some of that ventilation, but you also are not getting too much ventilation where they're not holding in any humidity. Another way to have humidity up there is to mist the enclosure. Um, I actually mist twice a day because our winters are very dry. In the summer, I usually only have to mist once though. I do recommend using dechlorinated water if you live in the US, however. You can get things like RectoSafe to do that, but since our water does have chlorine in it, it is treated with chlorine, that can uh, be a little bit harsh for more sensitive creatures. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that it was helpful. Let me know down in the comments below if you are going to get yourself a Madagascar Sing Cockroach or if you already have some. Don't forget to go follow me over on Instagram. The link will be down in the description below. I also have an art account where I do custom digital pet pictures. I also have a Facebook group where we can ask advice, share opinions, and share pictures of our pets. It is Ollie Exotics Thriving Over Surviving. It is going to be in the, link in the description below as well. Um, it's mostly exotic based, but anyone can join even if you don't have pets. Don't forget to give this video a like for the algorithm. It really helps me out. Subscribe to this channel if you're into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't want to remember that. And as always, I'll see you next week. Bye.